In this lesson, I'll be showing you problems related to decimal number in a particular base to base 10. But before we get started, I need to make something clear about the negative powers of number base. For instance, you are given a number 1011.101. This 1011 is the whole number part. You can see that's the number before the decimal point from your left hand side. The number before the decimal point, this is the decimal point right here. That's the whole number part. If you look at the example we've been looking at from our former lessons, we've been looking at whole number, but this time around, we are making use of decimal number. So we are making conversions with decimal numbers. And then the next thing will be after this decimal point, the number that appears to the right hand side, they are the decimal fraction. So for the whole number part, let's look at which one is the last digit in the whole number part. The last digit here is this one. So that means if you're taking the powers now, the powers will move from this position of this one and then it will move to the left hand side and to the positive powers. So that means this one will be zero, this one will be one, this one will be two and the next one will be three. You get that? Okay, all these ones are positive powers. This is the main one we are talking about, the negative powers now. So this one now, after the decimal point, you can see we have the first digit after the decimal point. We have second digit and we have third digit. It might be more than that. But for this first digit, this first digit will have a negative power of minus one. And then the next digit, which is second digit, will have the negative power of minus two. And the third one will have minus three and so forth. For example, one, we are asked to convert 1001.011 in base 2 to base 10. Okay, write down your number first. So, and the next thing to now do is for you to use the power expansion. So, to use power expansion, what you're basically doing there, you take this number, remember, write down the powers on top first. So if you write the powers, you know that this particular one is starting with zero because it's the last digit in the whole number part. This one is the last digit. That's why it's starting with zero, one, two, three. So we move to the left hand side. Then after the decimal, the power will start from minus one and the next digit after decimal will be minus two. This is decimal point, minus two. And the next digit will be minus three and so forth like that okay so the next thing to now do is to do the power expansion so you take the first digit one multiply by the base raised to power the power on top of that digit that's one times two raised to power three so you get that then the next one will now be this one one times the base raised to power two that's one times two raised to power 2 so we have plus 1 times 2 raised to power 2 and the next one will be 0 times 2 raised to power 1 so we have plus 0 times 2 raised to power 1 okay we've done the whole number part okay pardon me it's still remaining one there then we have this last digit for the whole number part we have 1 multiplied by 2 raised to power 0 okay so we've done the whole number part now we are now left with the decimal fraction part so we'll take up this zero now zero multiplied by the base raised to power what we have here as the power so the power here is minus one so we have plus zero times two raised to power minus one and then the next one will be plus one times two raised to power minus two and the next one will be plus one times two raised to power minus three You've got that okay so the next thing we need to do now is to try to multiply this one 2 raised to power 3 now will be 2 times 2 times 2 and that will give 8 so 1 times 8 then the next one will be 2 raised to power 2 that's 2 times 2 that's 4 1 times 4 
plus 1 times 4 and the next one will be 2 raised to the power 1 2 raised to the power 1 is 2 so we have plus 0 times 2 okay so the next one now will be 2 raised to the power 0 2 raised to the power 0 is 1 so we have plus 1 times 1 the next one now is 2 raised to the power minus 1 okay if you remember from indices when we have 2 raised to the power minus 1 that's, it, that's the that's negative indices it says that this raised to the power which has the minus will become 1 over so that means for this 2 raised to the power minus 1 now it will be 1 all over 2 raised to the power 1 and 2 raised to the power 1 is 2 so we have 1 over 2 so for this particular one we have 0 times 1 over 2 then the next one now we have 2 raised to the power minus 2 this minus will become 1 and then we have 1 all over 2 raised to the power 2 and 2 raised to the power 2 is 4 that means we have plus 1 times 1 over 4 I hope you get the idea okay the next one now we have 2 raised to the power minus 3 so if this minus which is the negative indices turns to 1 that means we have 1 divided by 2 raised to the power 3 and then for the 2 raised to the power 3 2 times 2 times 2 that gives 8 that means we have 1 over 8 and then we have plus 1 times 1 over 8 okay the next thing so let's try to multiply through now for this one 1 times 8 will give us 8 1 times 4 here will give us 4 0 times 2 will give us 0 anything multiplied by 0 will give 0 1 times 1 will give 1 0 times half will give 0 and then 1 times 1 over 4 will give 1 over 4 anything multiplied by 1 will give the same thing 1 times 1 over 8 will give 1 over 8 as you can see right here okay the next thing we need to do 8 plus 4 that gives 12 12 plus 1 and that gives 13 okay since that is 13 and then we have fraction here 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 so let's add the fractions together determine the LCM of the fraction so the LCM of this fraction the LCM of this fraction make a line just you're trying to do a rough work what is the LCM of this fraction if you look at the denominator in the fraction 1 over 4 the denominator here is 4 and the denominator in this 1 over 8 is this 8 so we have 4 and 8 as the denominator so how do we get our LCM we need to choose a particular number that this 4 can go in it and this 8 can go in it so it can either be either of these numbers so let's try to see can the small number go in this big number 8 4 can go in 8 that means we can choose 8 as our LCM so if 8 is our LCM how many times will 4 go in 8 4 will go in 8 2 times 4 times 2 that is 8 so we take that 2 and multiply by the numerator that is 2 times 1 and that will give us 2 then plus then how many times with 8 go in 8 that will be one time so we multiply by that one by this numerator which is one one times one and that will give one so we now have two plus one that will give three so our fraction addition for one over four plus one over eight will give us three all over eight okay now our answer will now be 
13 whole number 3 over 8 you know we added 8 plus 4 plus 1 that give us 13 and the 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 give us 3 over 8 so we have 13 whole number 3 over 8 you can also make use of your calculator to solve it or you, you can leave your answer in a decimal form or a fraction form so you can have your answer to be 13.375 so if you use your calculator to do this you get the value 13.375 so the conversion of 1101.011 in base 2 to base 10 is 13 whole number 3 over 8 or 13.375 now let me show you the example 2 okay we ask to convert 124.23 in base 7 to base 10 write down your number 124.23 in base 7 and the next thing is for us to make use of our power expansion to solve this problem the very first thing you need to take out is the 124 is the whole number side and this 23 is the decimal fraction side so for the 124 the last digit in the 124 which is the whole number part is 4 that means our 0 we start from here we have 0 1 2 there and then for the decimal fraction part after the decimal the first digit will be minus one the next digit which is the second digit after the decimal point will be minus two like that okay the next thing now is to do the expansion we we'll take the first digit we we'll multiply it by the base and then we we'll raise that base to the power on top of that digit so that means we have 1 times 7 raised to power 2 then the next one we we'll take up the next digit which is the second digit 2 multiplied by 7 raised to power 1 so plus 2 times 7 raised to power 1 and the next one will now be plus 4 times 7 raised to power 0 you get the idea and then the next one will now be 2 times 7 raised to power minus 1 so the last one now will be 3 times 7 raised to power minus 2 so okay having done all this now the next thing to do okay so let's try to multiply through 7 square that's 7 times 7 and 7 times 7 will give us 49 so we have 1 times 49 there equals to 1 times 49 then 7 raised to power 1 that is 7 so we have plus 2 times 7 there then 7 raised to power 0 that will give us 1 anything raised to power 0 is 1 4 times 1 that will give us 4 so we have plus 4 times 1 and then the next one now we have 7 raised to power minus 1 remember your negative indices here so this minus is a power that will turn to 1 so that means we have 1 all over 7 raised to power 1 and 7 raised to power 1 is 7 so that means we have this one to be 1 over 7 so we have plus 2 times 1 over 7 and then for the next one which is 7 raised to power minus 2 this minus becomes 1 that we have 1 all over 7 raised to power 2 so 7 raised to power 2 that's 7 times 7 that's 49 so that means we have 7 raised to power minus 2 will be 1 over 49 so we have plus 3 times 1 over 49 so 1 times 49 will give 49 2 times 7 will give 14 and 4 times 1 will give 4 then 2 times 1 over 7 that will give 2 all over 7 if you say 2 times 1 because this 2 is 2 over 1 so 2 multiplied by 1 that will give 2 then the 1 under it 1 multiplied by 7 that will give 7 so that's why we have 2 over 7 there 
then 3 times 1 over 3 times 1 over 49 that will give us 3 over 49 so we now have something like this 49 plus 14 plus 4 plus 2 over 7 plus 3 over 49 okay now the next thing you need to do you can make use of your calculator to do this but if you are not using your calculator so you can quickly add this one 49 plus 14 and that should give you 63 so 63 plus 4 and that will give 67 okay then but we now have this fraction here 2 over 7 plus 3 over 49 so let's try to solve the fraction in solving the fraction we need to determine the LCM so what is the LCM there we have 7 and 49 so which one is the big number out of this denominator is 49 so ask yourself the next question can the small number which is the small denominator 7 can it go in 49 yes 7 can go in 49 that means we can use 49 as our LCM okay so how many times will 7 go in 49 7 will go in 49 7 times because we have 7 times 7 to give us 49 7 goes in 49 7 times so we take that 7 and multiply it by the numerator that's 7 times 2 and that will give us 14 then we say plus how many times will 49 go in 49 that is one time so we multiply that one times the numerator here that's one times three and that will give us three okay so we have 14 plus three and that will give us 17 there so this fractions addition now is 17 over 49 so our answer will now be 67 whole number 17 over 49 you can see that when we have 49 plus 14 plus 4 we got 67 so and when we add the fraction we got 17 over 49 so if you're leaving your answer in decimal form you should have 67.3469 so you can make use of your calculators to cross check that so that you'll be sure 17 divided by 49 should give you 0. 3469 when you add that to 67 that's the reason why we have this 67.3469 so this is the final answer